So this week, I want to talk about the number one key that unlocks the deeper meaning of your book. Some people talk about this lightly as the theme of the book, but I really want to dig in and talk about the controlling idea of the book, because this isn't some one and done thing where, you know, you start writing and you think, you know, well, this book is about this. It actually is such a special part of the craft. And the more you really grasp the controlling idea of your book, the easier it is to write, and then the easier it is to sell afterwards. The controlling idea is what makes movies sell. It's what makes blockbusters really successful. It's not special effects. There are plenty of movies that do a lot of crazy things. But when you really get into this controlling idea, it really creates traction with your book, with the writing process of your book, and then also with the marketing process after. It's just a wonderful key. And I've been reading so much about it lately when I've been working on my own stuff and I wanted to share it here. So one book that I've really dug back into is Story by Robert McKee. This is a classic of the writing craft. And one of the first things he talks about in his classic on the craft of writing is the controlling idea. And so to get started, really stories and art in general, it's an idea wrapped in emotion. And so we've got these two aspects that are just really in, intertwined. We've got the idea and the emotion together. When we see a painting that moves us, it's there's an idea inside that art and then the emotion just radiates off of it. And so one example I like to use to get us started is there's that song by Led Zeppelin, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. So we've got an idea, Babe, I'm going to leave you. And then if you look at the music, oh my goodness, the emotion of that music, the emotion, the poetry of the lyric, all of that is wrapped around that idea. We begin with this like sentimental acoustic guitar that really draws you into the relationship. And then wham, the electric comes in and it's just like ripping a heart right open. And so you can see how these two things working together, we've got the emotion wrapped around an idea. And that's what you wanna do with your book too. If you're writing self-help, people are coming to you with emotional reasons for writing, for for buying that book. And if you're writing an adventure, if you're writing fiction, of course, there's something at the center of that book, an idea that's intriguing. And then we wrap it with so much emotions. So the controlling idea isn't just an, any idea. Really, let's get to the center of this. So I'm going to work with Robert McKee here in order to explain this. And right here, you know, I take all my notes in my own little notebook. And so Robert McKee says in his book, Story, the more you cultivate your story around a controlling idea, the more meaning readers will discover. So when you really solidify this controlling idea, it's kind of like light reflecting off a diamond. We've got a really solid idea and then just all of the emotion reflects in different ways. So the definition of the controlling idea is a sentence that describes why or how life undergoes change. So that's where we get to the core of it. Life undergoes change. So he talks about this as a value and a cause, the value, the life, the value in life, and then what causes it to change. So this is why when you can really grasp this part of your book, if you have this solid then you're going to know what seems to include and what seems to leave out. If you're writing self-help, you're going to know what stories and anecdotes to include and what to leave out, what advice to give and what to leave out. So let, let's put this to work and I'm gonna give you a couple examples. So for instance, the controlling idea of the movie Titanic. Life is precious and the real trap is not going after what you love. There's a controlling idea. We've got life is precious. That's the value. Life is love. We've got that love story. And then the thing that changes in the protagonist, Rose, is that she decides to go after love. She goes back and forth throughout that whole novel they're trapped on a on a sinking ship and then she goes after what she loves another example pirates of the caribbean 
right and wrong aren't about obeying the rules. Sometimes doing what's right requires an act of piracy. And so we've got the Will Turner, the protagonist of that story. He's going back and forth of, I'm not a pirate. I am a pirate. I'm going to do what's right. This is wrong, etc. He's trying to navigate this crazy adventure to get what he wants most, his true love. So those are examples. And if you study Save the Cat, this is a little related to the theme stated. So this is a fun, after you really start write, uh, studying the writing craft, you never watch movies the same way again. So you'll find that those are also the theme stated. There are people in these books, Jack Sparrow in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies, sorry. And then Jack also in the Titanic, they practically say these things out loud at certain points in the movies. And so no matter what you're watching, if you're relaxing at the end of a day and you're watching a movie, look out for that controlling idea or theme stated. It really brings everything together. But let's talk about nonfiction also. So nonfiction also has controlling ideas. Gabby Bernstein talks a lot about this when she talks about writing. So the controlling idea in a book, in a nonfiction book, is a little easier to find because it's right here in the subtitle. So methods for manifesting a life beyond your wildest dreams. We've got the value at stake here, it's manifesting. It's living your best life. And then we've got the thing that causes it to change, which are these methods of attraction, methods for manifesting. So there are these two sides to the controlling idea, the value and the change. And so that's always what's at the center of a story. So you know, I put out these videos every single Friday in order to move you forward with your own book and to get you writing. And I also provide great freebies in order to get you going whenever you're stuck. So right below this video, you are going to find writing prompts. And one of the first exercises in these writing prompts are turning points. Turning points get you into practicing, mixing change with values, mixing mixing ideas with emotions. And then there are a lot of other really helpful prompts right down below in that link. And so please subscribe to this channel because every single Friday, I'm going to give you a free writing class that gets you going and moves you forward on your book. So much love. Talk soon.